All right, hey everybody, I'm back. Keith Archer with Ultimate Shrimp Cure. Uh, a couple things I'm gonna cover today. We're gonna talk about plunking for steelhead, not plunking necessarily out on the Columbia River summertime plunking where, where you're kicking your feet up and relaxing, but actually plunking uh, some of these tributaries uh, that allow bait and are gonna give you an opportunity at fish on the move. Uh, when we have these higher waters and stuff like that, you're seeing a lot of this uh, runoff, snow melt, that sort of thing happening. We've got a big rainstorms coming through. Uh, some of these rivers are jumped significantly. Here's the thing. If you got a foot of visibility, you're fishing. If you got 10 inches, 8, 10 inches of visibility, technically speaking, you're fishing. Uh, a lot of people will start to shy away, put their gear away, and, 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 you know, call it until that green water comes back, the lower water where you can go float fish, uh, drift fish, you know, all those sort of things. I, I'm a believer in plunking. One of my biggest steelhead ever that I ever landed came on plunking. I'll share that with fish with you here shortly. I've got them on the wall, matter of fact. It's a replica. Um, <clears throat> but we've got coon shrimp, okay? Uh, these coon shrimp are absolutely deadly when it comes to plunking for steelhead. So let's talk a little bit about the setups for a second. Uh, I pre-tied a few things to give you an idea of how we set up and what we do. One of my favorite things to do is... is I'll take a two aught hook, okay, single bead, spin glow, size four, size six spin glow. Uh, these are some color choices that I would actually use myself. Um, and when I go to rig these shrimp up, one of the things I want you to pay attention to, I'm gonna bring this up close to the lens here and hopefully it'll focus in, but on the back side of this, this hook here, we have no tag. It's super important uh, when you tie a hook up to stay away from those these tags here, okay? Those tags themselves will tear the shrimp shell, whether it's a sand shrimp or a coon shrimp or whatever it is when you're rigging those shrimp. So I'm gonna go back to the one that I tied without a tag here and I'm gonna grab one of my coon shrimp. Look at that, we got a whisker, love them whiskers. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how I rig those up real quick. So we're gonna turn the, the shrimp in my left hand, right side up, hook, right fingers. We're gonna enter in the segment just behind the neck where you're grabbing meat. Okay, see there, we're entering the segment just behind the neck, grabbing the meat. We're gonna roll that hook down into the meat without passing through the belly, uh, meaning the belly side of the, the shrimp. And then we're gonna roll that hook around, bring it over, and then I'm gonna pull out this egg loop real quick, just like so, pre-tied egg loop. Okay, and then we'll pull that tail back just a hair, bring that egg loop around the belly, pull it in just a little bit tight, just like so, okay? So the setup's gonna look just like that, all right? So that's how I would set up, single hook, single offering, set up with a about a three and a half foot leader, okay? And then I set up off of that, barrel swivel. This goes to my leader. This goes to my main line, and I've got a sliding lead. Why do I use a sliding lead? I've got a seven, eight inch dropper, and I've got about a three, four, five ounce pyramid, depending on what you need and where you're at. Sometimes it takes six, seven ounces, or six, eight ounces to get down. Um, but let's talk about this. I'm using a sliding lead. Most people will use fixed leads. I want a sliding lead so that when I cast out and I reel down tight, I'm going to reel down tight and that, that lead swivel is going to pull tight to the stationary swivel between the main line and the leader. And then it's gonna sit there. And then as the current pulls against it, everything's gonna be sitting there working. Your shrimp will be back here floating uh, up on the spin glow, okay? It'll be back here floating, spinning back here, waiting for the fish to move up river. When the strike happens, okay, I want that lead, that leader, as that fish pulls and starts to turn to go, it's gonna be pulling on your rod tip and your rod tip only and not necessarily pulling on the lead until he decides to pull tight enough to your rod tip and then takes off and runs, then he's gonna start dragging that lead. The lead can and will help you at times. It'll actually help you pull uh, a hook a little bit tighter in the fish's mouth, but you know, that's when you grab your rod, set the hook, do your thing, and there you go. Um, pretty easy setup. Now, where do I go? Well, a lot of these tributaries, you've got hatchery fish, You've got opportunities of some native fish. You've got opportunities of broodstock fish. You've got some of the larger tribs that dump in the Washington side, Oregon side. And then you have some of the smaller tributaries and stuff like that uh, where the bait's allowed. And I've, you know, when the water's high and you got a foot of visibility, 8, 10, 12 inches of visibility, 
being able to go down, pick a spot. And what you're looking for, in my personal opinion, is you're looking for a traveling lane. So what is a traveling lane? A steelhead's gonna be as lazy as he can be, as long as he's not being, uh, or not spooky. Um, so that traveling lane is going to be that inside current seam, if that makes sense, where you're going to have real fast water on the outside, you know, the higher, faster water, and you start looking at it, that inside belly. But one of the key factors is, is they love that depth, you know, three and a half to seven, eight feet of water. Okay. If you got a foot of visibility, it's fair to say I've caught a bunch of steelhead in my life and four or five feet. If you got, you know, two feet, three feet of visibility, the standard type water, glacial looking type water, you'll catch them in four, five, six, seven, eight feet deep, wherever that current seam is. And what I mean by current seam is you got the fast water and then you have that transitional water. That transitional water is the water where it slows down. And when I say slow down, slows down, I'm talking about to like a walking type speed, okay? Maybe a little bit faster than a walking type speed. That's the path of least resistance that those fish are gonna travel as they return home. And that's gonna give you the opportunity to put that. So when you cast in, uh, cast slightly, beyond that seam, okay? Lead's gonna drift a little, settle, and as it settles, you want it to settle right in on that current seam where you got the fast water, you got the slow water, and even the slack water on the inside line, okay? And then hopefully you find a spot that slack water, the inside uh, transition line where they're traveling being that four to seven feet deep and then the deeper outside water. So if you find that, you plunk that, Change your bait every 30 minutes or so, reel up, check, make sure you don't have grass, things like that. Sometimes in higher water, things will be floating down, grass and leaves and whatnot. But reel up and keep your bait clean uh, and keep it fresh. You're gonna find that as those fish are traveling and often will travel all day long, as there's nothing putting pressure on them or spooking them, um, you'll find that you'll consistently pick those fish off as they're coming in. Um, yeah, some of my favorite spin glow colors, okay, silver, Orange top, black wings, pink. God, I love pink. Black dots, black wings. I love that color. Sunrise color. You got the pink and the chartreuse and the orange and the black. And then my last, which is one of my favorite spring Chinook colors, which, by the way, guys, get ready. Those are going to be showing up here real soon. Uh, black, chartreuse, white, black wings. That is a deadly spring Chinook color. Uh, before we jump off here, uh, I'm going to share with you one last thing real quick. I'm going to walk you over here. This steelhead I caught March 6th. It is my biggest steelhead uh, in my career. Breaks just over 30 pounds. 30 pounds, I don't know, four, five, six ounces, something like that. Uh, that fish is 42 and three quarters by 22.6 inches around. So I'm going to give you a perspective on how big he is. That is... I'm 6'2", and that is my hand. So when you look at him, he is, that's a big boy. That's what they're all about. That's what February, March, April, that's what I wait for every year is for these big, big, big returning natives. Uh, some of the biggest steelhead that travel on planet Earth are coming back in these next two months into these Pacific Northwest uh, coastal streams. So uh, gear up be ready for them you know don't be afraid if, if you're plunking or on straight 15 pound test two aught three aught hook you know if that big dog ties into you land him enjoy get your picture it's a trophy um anyway if you guys have any other questions feel free to reach out holler glad to help ultimate shrimp care hit us up on uh facebook uh youtube subscribe and then uh we're also on instagram tiktok all sorts of places. Thanks much, guys. Talk soon.